California, a strong magnitude 4.9 struck south of Los Angeles and 3.5 magnitude an hour later north of Los Angeles on the Garlic Fault. It was felt by tens of thousands of people reported it to USGS. Let's see the map. All right, this is the big one, the 4.9. They're all basically shallow, but this is a quake swarm. and This is all today's quakes. Today's quakes. Now, after this one, we just had this past hour. See, it's south of Los Angeles, okay? And this is just now on the Garlic Fault, 3.9. Again, that's uh, shallow. Now, the 4.9 was reported to USGS by about 20,000 people, 19,000 people. You can imagine hundreds of thousands, of course, must have felt it. Let's go to the shake map. And we'll put it on the aerial so we can see this. This is Los Angeles over here. The shake intensity. And this, of course, shake contours. And we'll put on the plates. And some of the population density. This is Los Angeles here, as you can see. And let's take the population off. OK, this is where we're having our, we're having our quake swarm. And this is where we had the garlic fault about an hour later. And let's go in a little bit further so we can it's on the fault. Let's take some of this off. Well, no. Uh, first of all, we'll have to see, extrapolate the lines, because as we said before, they stop at a certain section. But obviously, if you, if you extrapolate the lines, of course it hit the San Andreas and garlic. Okay. This is the. Uh, this is an area of. Salt and Sea, which is a volcanic area. They have a geothermal plant there as well. There's Salt and Sea. You can see it much better. Take the rest of it off. So you can see. Okay, there it is. All right. And it's right on the fault. Right on the fault. Okay. And... Um, we have been told that these earth these faults are dangerous. These faults are dangerous. They do expect large quakes there, strong quakes that is. And this is the 3.5 and the shaking for the 3.5. Here we go. Again, that's north of Los Angeles. And the other one, of course, was uh, shook the garlic fault. And um, which is on the Walker Lane fault? So th that's the end of the Walker Lane fault system. And this is the area of Ridgecrest right here, where we had our 6.4 and 7.5 on July 4th and 5th. And we remember that we've had our swarms here lately the quakes that were out of nowhere, out of the blue, hit. In Texas, northwest Texas, but let's go. First, it was the 5.7 that struck in Salt Lake City right here. And we're still having a swarm there. Then we had the Texas 5 magnitude, and we're still having a swarm. And then we had the uh, Craters of the Moon area. This is Yellowstone. There it is, right there. That beautiful lava flow, craters of the moon area, where we had the sawtooth fault earthquake of 6.5 right here, and we're still having those quakes. This is where the geologists said that 10 years ago, they told us, and they warned us 10 years ago, that that gives, that this area gives a very big quake every 3,000 years, and the big quake being about four, uh, seven and a half magnitude, 
and um, that took place 2,100 years ago. So it's still a thousand years off, but still it could happen in an hour, it could happen in a thousand years, who knows? This is what the geologists say. And of course, that was such a big quake, it rocked and jolted Yellowstone, but it also was felt up in Manitoba, about uh, 700 miles away. And by extrapolation, the other radius would be down here, definitely, if not in the sea. So uh, it could be that these... Obviously, these big quakes. Oh, we just had another one. Okay, this is just a just now as I was talking. This is another one, three point six. I doubt it for any, but yeah, five people have already reported it. So there. Um, uh, this this obviously Los Angeles is top and bottom is swinging from these earthquakes. Uh, we've already discussed the fact that. Um, Okay, this is um, Salt Lake City. Okay. Oh, we have, we have to put the little ones on. We didn't put the little ones on yet. These are just the quakes over two and a half magnitude. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so Salt Lake City is still having a swarm. Uh, we still have, well, we didn't have, a, we didn't have quakes here, but we have, ooh, this is, how big is that? Let's see. Oklahoma, we said, was um, it's right on top of the other. That's another quake swarm. We see a lot of quakes in swarms. 3.7, that's quite big. 3.7. Just now, this past hour, 71 people reported feeling that. Um, well, why not? Let's talk about this. Uh, you know about this. We've talked about the mid-continental rift. Unfortunately, the USGS, when we talk about the detail, when they write about the details of this, they're always telling us that um, it's man-made quakes because of the fact that the tectonic edge is in the mid-Atlantic ridge, rift, ridge. Well, yeah, but uh, that's all fine and good, but we still have magma underneath these areas because we have the mid-continental rift here at the Kuwina uh, Fault and it's a horseshoe shaped. It's been there since 880 million years ago. The bulge of it is here. We also have magma under here. Here. And that was a Yellowstone-like multi-caldera supervolcano. That's what I'm calling it. Okay, so that Yellowstone here, Yellowstone-like here. Okay, and uh, magma under there. And we have magma under here, under these 30 sea, uh, underwater volcanoes in this sea, the East Coast Seamount right here. But this one here, the 3.7, my goodness, that just came up now. Oh, now 71 have reported it. Okay, 71 reported it, uh, which is red just now. So they're still reporting it. They're still reporting it. Uh, what I wanted to tell you is that um, this mantle plume from Baja feeds the west coast, the San Andreas, and the Walker Lane Fault System. The Walker Lane Fault System we know has the high threat volcanoes of California. That's the western part of that mantle plume. And then we have the other mantle plume. We saw the, cr the, cr the cross section many times going this way through Utah and into Yellowstone. And that part there is very uh, close to the surface, the Earth's surface. The, the magma is very close to the Earth's surface. And uh, this is only about 190 miles away. 190 miles away. And um, it's a volcanic field. Uh, but uh, I believe that the shaking that we had on Tuesday from this, uh, on the th on night of the 30, uh, March 31st to April 1st, uh, three, four days ago, and so we're still having, of course, uh, the tremendous amount of, how many, okay, up to yesterday there was 140 quakes. Um, how many are the blues today? Are they another 40? That, that would make them an, another 80. 
another, uh, oh, that would make a total of 180. Okay, that looks pretty big. This one here is pretty big, 4.3. That's a big aftershock. 250 reported feeling it. Uh, where, where do we go first? Okay, this is 4.3. Um, and uh, this one behind that one, 2.6. So this what? It's uh, 10, 20, another 30. Maybe another 25 to 30. So this is like we got 160, 180 quakes over there. So this is that one. And uh, hopefully Yellowstone won't, won't have too much of a problem. Well, let's go and see. Now, let's go and see the 4.6. Do they have a shake map for that? Let's see, 4.3. Yes, they do, okay. 250 people reported it. And let's go see the shaking intensity. And go to the aerial. We didn't put all the shaking, but still. Okay. And this is Yellowstone Lake. So yet again, extrapolate it yeah, it must have shaken that as well. This is Salt Lake right there. They cut the they cut the square, but if you extrapolate them, it must have shaken it. That's a lot of shaking for a little Yellowstone. I don't like that. Um, I really don't like that. Um, but as we said, there's Magmander there, and it comes from. Baja, and it's the same mantle plume that feeds the west coast and splits in two. That's because they have the Farallon, Farallon plate there. The ancient Pacific plate is lodged under this area and pushes the mantle plume this way as well. And uh, this is, as we saw before, you know, a, a volcanic area. And I'm, uh, all of you there, please be very careful because um, you can see by yourselves the amount of uh, activity there. San Diego, we talked about the uh, uh, fault in San Diego the other day. And we had a, an animation on that because the, Ro the Rose Canyon fault. Oh, there's more, even more there now. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Okay. Okay, this is the, pa the red is the past hour. The red is the past hour. And the blue is the past day. So what what is going on there? The Santa Rosa Mountains, what is going on there? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 70 in the past hour. Okay, I'm not making this up, but um, I'm not fear-mongering. It's just that you can see it for yourselves. You can see it for yourselves. Okay, and we know that this is a volcanic area. They have a geothermal plant there. And they also have one across the border in Mexico. Another geothermal plant. Um, magma is there, that's why they have that. Magma is there as well. This is the Ridgecrest area. This is the Garlic Fault. And that has f turned from red to blue, now as we can see. So I'll leave links below for you for this and you can study them on your own. But um, okay, this, this here in San Diego is so uh, south of Los Angeles, of course, quite active. Okay, so please be very careful. Thank you for your support. God bless you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon 
most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.